Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. From the makers of the number one cigar in the U.S. in 2013, the Aging Room Quattro F55 comes yet Another highly rated cigar, the Aging Room Bin Number no. 1. The Aging Room Bin Number no. 1 is a full body Dominican cigar with some of the world's oldest tobacco on the market today. From the harvest of 1997, 98, and 99, the Aging Room Bin Number no. 1 starts out smooth and builds up in strength and flavor until it reaches its full potential. The Aging Room Bin Number no. 1 is for the true cigar connoisseur looking for a sophisticated smoking experience with balance complexity and character. Aging Room Cigars. Blending is in our DNA. Every new blend borrows from the past in the Saga Blend number 7. It is the perfect combination of timeless knowledge of traditional tobaccos and the newer balance that today's cigar enthusiasts come to expect and love in a fine cigar. Leveraging six generations of experience and tradition of the Reyes family, the Saga Blend number 7 delivers a unique, full-flavored, medium-bodied cigar. The cigar is highlighted by a Brazilian wrapper over a blend of Central American and Dominican tobacco. Available in three sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Blend Number no. 7 is sure to please and bring together past and present. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our Stogies of the Week well, you got a couple of quick announcements before we get started. Yeah, our sponsors are really busy, um, and they're making a lot of appearances around the country. So um, I'll kind of go through some of these. Um, first up, Roberto Duran, uh, Roberto Palio Duran, that is, um, who is uh, from Duran Cigars, is making three appearances in the Midwest. He'll be at Blend Cigar Bar in Indianapolis on November 4th. He'll be at the Bluegrass Cigar Suite in Cincinnati on November 4th. Fifth, and he'll be at Jungle Gyms in Eastgate, Ohio, on November sixth. So check it out. Roberto is a great guy to see at an event. I've I've had a chance to um, see him. Um, Rafael Nodal. I tell you what, he has become the road warrior, Rafael Nodal. Um, and they they're doing a several events. Um, he uh, eight, there's going to be the Aging Room Cigar Bar at Wines of the World this Friday, October twenty third at the Hyatt Regency Pier 66 Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. I've stayed there. It's a great hotel. Um, if uh, For tickets, you can go to www.winesoftheworld.org, and it, that's going to be an event to benefit the Symphony of the Americas. Um, Raphael's also doing uh, some events in New York. He's actually doing a doubleheader on October 29th, which is next Thursday. He'll be at the Nat Sherman Townhouse from 2 to 7 p.m., and then he's going to kind of go up uh, uptown a little to the Carnegie Club um, at 8 p.m. So he's doing two events in one day. And then on the 30th, which is the day of our four-year anniversary show, um, there's a big event where we have six of our sponsors at this event. It's at the wow. – it's, um, it's a big event. Um, it's for the Port Authority Police Hispanic Society. Um, it's the Juan Cancel, who folks may know from Protocol Cigars. Um, it kind of spearheads this. This is the ninth annual event. They got about 30 manufacturers at this event. Um, but uh, some of our sponsors are going to be there front and center. Raphael will be there from Boutique Blends. Duran Cigars will be present there. Uh, Debonair is going to have a presence there. General Cigar, De Crassier. And AJ Fernandez um, is scheduled also to have a presence there. And apparently AJ, there's going to be an after party at Cigar Emporium in Lyndhurst. And... Um, AJ is going to be there himself. So you, you can go to Cigar Emporium for more details on tickets for that. Um, I would definitely, and the good news is we should be done with our show probably about six o'clock that day. So you, you all have time to get over to that event. You won't, there miss, you go. You won't miss the show. Um, 
M Bombay Cigar Aficionado, the uh, the giveaway to the uh, Big Smoke. Tomorrow is the deadline for um, the Vegas uh, portion. So if you want to get on a trip to Vegas, tomorrow is the deadline. You go to your local retailer and you buy three M Bombay cigars. They give you a ticket. The the Big Smoke in New York, that deadline is in um, November. So there's a little more. That's November 12th. So you have a, a little more time for um, for that one. Um, and then finally, I just wanted because uh, Juan got cut off early uh, when he lost power. But if you're interested in going to the Nicaraguan Cigar Festival, you can go to www.nicaraguancigarfestival.com um, for tickets and they, they have a great website uh and you can check everything out as far as that goes we wanted to just get that info one excellent um let me talk about a cigar first before i talk about some of the people that visited the studio recently oh yeah i want to good good <laughs> i smoked a, a la flor dominicana double ajero oscuro a Ooh. and this is an older cigar it's got the older lfd uh, band on it. It was a gift from Bill Barris from the Cigar Snapshot podcast. Uh, I heard, yep, it's uh, like, the Maytag guy. He's the Maytag guy. There. Yeah, like back when we first started the podcast. Um, and uh, actually, Tim Mugarini had reviewed the cigar uh, a while ago. For whatever reason, it got like lost in my humidor. And I never smoked it and reviewed it for whatever reason. Uh, one of the reasons it's like a nine by forty-seven, right? So you got to be committed to smoking a nine by forty-seven size cigar. This cigar is big, very big. Um, and for all those reasons and more, I wanted to absolutely love this cigar. Unfortunately, I didn't. Um, and, and I don't know how much age plays into this, Will, um, because it's a very old cigar. And when a cigar is that big. You know, the first two-thirds of the cigar, man, it, I, you know, I didn't get a whole lot of flavor from. I mean, it was enjoyable. It wasn't, it wasn't a bad cigar by any stretch of the imagination. But I didn't get a lot of that flavor that really popped, right? And I didn't get a lot of that flavor that really popped until the final third of this cigar. Um, so for that reason, I'm rating it a try one. I think if those flavors in the final third could have been present throughout, I would have liked this cigar. But uh, it just, it, you know, that size in, in my flavor profile, just it didn't go together. They re-released that two years ago. In Again. a different ring gauge, right? I think it's a... I it's think it's a larger, larger ring gauge, right? Yeah, not yeah. 100% sure, but I believe you're right. But yeah, they def and, but it has the newer band on it. Yeah, because I do have one of the newer ones, which I haven't smoked yet. Yeah, and, and I, I probably had that one about a five or two. Um, you know, A's a tough cigar. A's a very is. tough cigar to do. Yeah, and that was a, a, you know, it was a tough size cigar to be in that 47 ring gauge and be that long. So, again, not a bad cigar. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I, th I thank Bill for gifting it to us. And I apologize that I took probably three years to smoke it. But, you know, <laughs> I, I did smoke it eventually. You know, but, but you know, and, and that's part of the fun of what we do, you know, is is going back into the humidor, putting some stuff away for a while. Mm -hmm. um, there's a fun part to that. And that cigar was already aged before he gave it to me, too. So I probably waited a little too long to smoke it. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe. But you never know. Over to you, Will. Um, I smoked a – actually, I, I, I smoked the Freya. Uh, earlier this week in the robusto uh, size in the robusto size the bahala robusto um which is um made by las cumbres tobacco that's owned by uh, jose blanco and his wife emma and if you've uh, watched episode 151 of stogie geeks emma talks all about that cigar um when we had that cigar on the show i think we smoked the tor we either smoked the robusto or the toro i don't remember the size i apologize that cigar it was a little young when we had it. Now, it wasn't bad young. It was just, you. it needed to, I think, settle just a little more um, in terms of that. And I've See, had these I really, the one we spoke when we interviewed Emma, I really liked a lot. I actually thought it was a little too heavy on the palate. Yeah, see, I didn't. I, I, I love that cigar. 
I, I love it. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll be honest. Some of the cigars, uh, um, and, and I smoke this particular cigar well, and I haven't reviewed it yet because I want to put a little more time on it. I got it at an event, and I feel like they could use a little time in my humidor before I give it my full review. Yeah, and we've talked about that too. You know, mm-hmm. there's a cigar you and I were talking about before the show that we decided not to talk about tonight because we just felt it was it just came to the store and you know. Yeah, so I, and especially I wanted to mention well with events, I feel like the, a lot of the cigars have just come to the store and I feel like they need time to rest. And I was excited to smoke a, some of the ones I got in a recent event, and I was like, you know what, I need to put the rest down for a while before I review them. I, I totally agree. I, I definitely think that's the right way to go. Because I feel like they have to fulfill a big order for an event, and maybe the cigars haven't rested long enough. Yeah, they they do, and then you know it's. Although you know, I, know I did like I did like Emma's cigar and the Robusto. I did smoke I, a couple of them, and I have to tell you, the Robusto sticks out in my mind. That's probably the one that I will end up coming back and reviewing on the show. Um, I don't want to call it Bell of the Ball so far, uh, but it could very likely be a candidate for Bell of the Ball. Yeah, it well, that's kind of exactly what I said about this cigar. Um, I right now the one and Emma sent us some cigars, and I've kind of gone through, but I kept going back to the Robusto. Mm-hmm. Um, there was just something I really liked about that Robusto. It had a, a nice earthy component. There was a a nice, there was a pleasant citrus sweetness to that cigar i felt it came down a little in body than when we had it on the show though and that's what i but liked I, about. I still felt it, it coated your palate very it, very well like it has it, this richness and smoothness to it that it coats your entire palate and that's something that i really look as a redeeming quality um to the freya cigars is the way yeah. that they coat your palate with all that flavor yeah now people were saying that that cigar kicks up in strength in the last third yeah, i can see that Over, I didn't, yeah, not so much with the Robusto as much as if you have the uh, the Pyramid, you'll definitely get that. Yeah, the that. Pyramid, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Um, the one thing I'll say about this cigar is it does have a thicker wrapper. Um, so this is a cigar that I would advise settling down a bit, um, getting to an optimum humidity, because um, it's it's going to require a little more TLC with the burn, but it won't, it's not, it wasn't a chore as far as, keeping this thing lit or keeping it burning straight. It just with a thicker wrapper sometimes that, and they're using a Dominican Criollo 98 wrapper on that. Um, I just felt it may, maybe, and I don't know, we were just talking about that with Juan, you know, sometimes with the primings of that. And I get the, I get the impression that's a higher priming wrapper she used on that. Um, but overall, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I had it as a box split. Um, it's very reasonably priced, 785 too. Um, and I could see this going box worthy because I've I've already liked how it's transitioned a, a lot since then. And I think I think that this is what I also liked about the cigar. It's different than Jose. It's completely different than what Jose's uh, cigars yeah, are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Jose was uh, actually Jose's dropped by. Oh, is that- yeah. So uh, as we spoke about last week, uh, I went to Jose's blending seminar, and then uh, the day after that, the day after we recorded the show last week. Uh, Jose made a quick visit uh, to the studio because uh, he was still in the New England area. In fact, I think he st- was still in the New England area not too long ago. He's doing like this whirlwind tour. Um, but on Friday of last week, he stopped by the studio very, very briefly. And um, Jose's in a, he's an extraordinary man. I'll just have oh. to say that. And uh, what makes me, one of the reasons it makes me say that is, you know, he can walk into a room full of people and he commands everyone's attention. And that's, yep. um, you know, it's an, it's an amazing thing about Jose when he does that. And, you know, he walked in here and the only person he knew in the room was me. And, uh, you know, he commanded everyone's attention and there was a bunch of computer security geeks standing around getting ready to do our 10 year anniversary for security weekly last Friday. And uh, he commanded everyone's attention and uh, sat next to me and chatted for a little while, visited the studio. So it was really, really cool. And nice of him to drop by. Yep. Um, and he, yeah, I mean, um, that's just, we're honored, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 we had, you know, I, when people like Jose or you know, other folks in the industry who are the, you know, the person behind the brand, the person doing the blending, um, I think it's it, it's very important for them to go out and visit places and what I've noticed is they're on a very tight schedule. Um, so I'm always very honored when they, they come by in here and, and visit the studio. And it just so happened that another uh, person behind uh, the driving force behind La Flor Dominicana, Lito Gomez, 
uh, also falls in that same category on a very tight schedule. Um, I met him here this week, uh, and we get to sit down for a little while and smoke. Um, but again, they have a very tight schedule. He was going to an event. Uh, it was nice enough to stop by here in the studio. He signed the uh, beer stein, the LFD beer stein, and, and took a picture with me in the studio. So uh, it was ni- really nice to talk to Lido uh, when he came here. Fantastic guy. And dude, he smokes those little LFD. Box pressed Cameroon. What are they called? The the two thousands. I want to say. Yeah, it's a little. It's, I, I want to say it's a little box pressed Cameroon. You know, one of my buddies on the on the picture you put up knew right away what the cigar. Was. I'm sorry, I'm drawing yeah. a blank on it, but yeah, he smokes. He knew right away what it was. Every picture I've seen, he did this like tour of Europe. I was talking about it with him, and I'm like, dude, every picture you have one of these cigars, and I'm like, it's so awesome. Like, and those cigars are actually really good. In fact, when John Carney came on the show. Um, he had given me some of those. I had smoked some of those around that time because uh, John was around during that time. And uh, it's one I have to go back to. And it, it, John says it's one of the ones they smoke a lot when they have sales meetings and stuff like that. It's kind of like a ritual. They smoke those cigars. Um, so it was really cool, uh, you know, to have uh, Lido here. So Yeah, yeah. And, you, you know, you mentioned also Jose. He's now making his way through the Southeast. I'm going to see him in Atlanta tomorrow. You're doing his blending seminar tomorrow. I'm going to Atlanta, yeah. So and so he's probably on a plane right now to be in Atlanta. Because he, he was in, he, was he in Kurt Kendall's shop not too long ago? Yeah, but he came to North Carolina yesterday. I know he was in okay, Greensboro. Okay, so it was a couple of days ago he was in New Hampshire. He must have gone right from the Northeast to the Southeast recently. Yeah, but, you know, you get guys like Jose and Lido, and like you said, they are really on tight schedules. And, we, you know, a lot of times when we go to events, um, it's tough. You know, we can't always put a camera in there. It's, yeah. You know, because they're there for the events. So we're honored that they come by the studio and, and just spend some time. And that's just – I think I was really jealous cause considering I had a – day job commitment all week and I'm seeing these pictures. I'm like ready to shoot myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome when people come and visit. So if you're ever in the Rhode Island area, come by the studio. Yep. Uh, I think it's my turn. Yes. This smoke I picked up at two guys smoke shop. It's a Cuba Rica limitada L five. Have you heard of this blend before? Will? Yeah, they have some. This is a this is a very small batch blend. Uh, I know Cuba Rica tobacco. They make a cigar called Barabbas. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that Dave has had the had the owner on his show a few times. Okay. Uh, it's I believe he's Costa Rican. Yeah, I believe you're right. Um, yeah. What a great smoke! It, it's uh, this awesome box press robusto was the size that I smoked. Um, it has such deep, rich flavors, a little bit of that, like, almost like dark fruit kind of sweetness going on with it. Um, awesome, awesome smoke. I, I, I really liked it. Um, I smoked it last week in the studio. It's a solid fiver, and I can totally see that getting better with time. No, that's good. That's, that's good. Yeah, it's what size those, was it again? What size did you smoke again? It was a Limitada L5. This was the, uh, it was a Robusto and a box press. Okay. And, and more and more, I'm loving this box pressed for all the reasons we've talked about recently. Yeah, I know. Because cigar we, smoked great, you know? Yeah, when you get a good, you know, and I have a box press I'm going to be talking about in a little bit as well of an existing blend. Mm. Yeah, this one really yeah. surprised me because a, a brand that I have never heard of before, Mr. Jonathan recommended it to me. And again, he was spot on with his recommendations because this was a great cigar. Yeah, yeah. It's always interesting when you can like said you find these hidden gems, so to speak. And I think Cuba Reek is definitely one of the hidden gems that are out there right mm-hmm. now. I have not smoked them yet, but I've heard nothing but good things about them. Mm-hmm. Back to you, Will. Um, I smoked and I had not really smoked this cigar until recently, but uh the 2014 Illusioni Singulare. Um the Anu the Anu I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to say it. Anu Anu Anunnaki, if someone's got the correct pronunciation, correct me, but I'll say the Singulari 2014, um, it's a Nicaraguan Puro um, featuring the Epernay wrapper, uh, that Cafe Rosado wrapper. And this no, wait, is a... This 2014? 
This is the 14, which came out like at the end of the year last year. Okay. And the, so this is like a big Robusto size. Yeah, this is the probably the shortest and the fattest cigar they've done in, in here. It's a five and a half by fifty-four. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know you've you haven't reviewed this one yet. I hadn't reviewed it. I smoked it once, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I was and I liked it. Um, I've kind of I had a bunch of them um, that I've gone through um, in the last couple of weeks. So I've smoked a few of these. Um, I know this cigar got a lot, a lot of high praise, and it's a good cigar. Dude, I thought the cigar was off the chart. I, I think it was on my list for 2014. It had it to be. Was. It was. Yeah, it was one of the best cigars I smoked last year, hands down, without question. <laughs> I gave it to Brendan next door. must be one of her uh, favorite cigars that I've ever given her. It didn't wow me. Really? That's interesting. It's interesting now, how our palates differ sometimes. Yeah, and, 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 but I had smoked this earlier in the year, and it did wow me. So I don't mm-hmm. know if AIDS did something, but I smoked a couple of these. It's a very good cigar. I mean, it's a fiver all the way. Um, it just, I've had some of the other singularities and maybe I'm comparing it against those, you know, I love, I mean, it's Phantom. very different from the other, it's very different from a lot of Lu- other, uh, uh, smokes from Illusion. Yeah. And maybe because I'm comparing it to the ECCJ as well, which uses that wrapper. Um, yeah, this was a little more amped the up. ECCJ. Yeah. It's very different. Yeah. It, it's a different cigar. Um, but it's a good. I mean, a fiber. It's a. It's a. A fiber is you know still a very good cigar. It had a lot of complexity in this cigar. I'm not yeah, knocking it. It does. It's just when I've smoked the 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 ten, the thirteen, and I just kind of would go back to those sizes probably before this one. But it's a thirteen dollar cigar, so it's not cheap. So again, I'm not killing the cigar. It's just maybe I'm comparing it to the ten <laughs> and the thirteen, which were which were really highly rated smokes. Um, you know, and I, I like the Maduro they did in 2012. A lot of people didn't like that. I really like that one as well. Mm-hmm. But um, this is a good cigar. It's like I said, there's nothing. Um, it's like I said, I'm, maybe I'm comparing it is, is the issue there. See, my advice on this cigar, if you could find a box of these now, I would buy it hands down. So to would me, you, it's but, box worthy and beyond. Now, we, see, if I had a choice though, of this cigar sitting there against the 2013 Rose Croix, I picked up the Rose Qua. Yeah, see, this one, the only other Illusion Singular release is that, was it the original one in 2010? Phantom. The Phantom. The Phantom was off the charts. This one is my second choice in that. And uh, let me tell you, to be second to that cigar is freaking special. You know, and and Dion is a, these Singularities are true one and dones. He doesn't mm-hmm. bring them back. So, um, I mean, basically, I, here's what I say. If you like the Singularities, you want to get this cigar. I would say that. Maybe I preferred some of the other sizes. Like, you know, they did that that Churchill last, uh, with the Rose Qua, which I really like. The Toro was in the the Phantom. You know, so, again, I think I think there's something for everybody. I think this, like I said, I think if you're an Illusioni fan, you, you're going to want to get this cigar, though. Um, I smoked uh, an M. Bombay Casera in the Toro size. And we talked about this. It was either on a Stoic Geek short or news that we recorded last week, Will. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know this is a, a sponsor cigar. Um, it's got an Ecuadorian wrapper and binder, and the filler is from Peru and Dominican Republic. It's got a very, I would say it's a mild to medium bodied profile. It's not super mild, which is interesting. Looking at the blend profile, you'd think instantly like super mild. It's not. It's got a little bit of kick to it, but... The flavor profile in the cigar is off the charts. It's got that shaggy foot, which smokes fantastic, by the way. Um, when you get into the wrapper, it gets even more fantastic. This is a box-worthy cigar all day long. I would smoke one of these every morning with coffee. It is just unbelievable. Nicely balanced, very smooth and creamy, and really kicks it up in the flavor profile. I, I love this cigar, Will. It, it, the price point on it is very high. The only thing that would hold me back from smoking one every morning is it's like a sixteen dollars cigar. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's the best. It's, I, I put it up there as good a shag foot as I've had on any cigar. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a very good cigar, though. Yeah, he did a fantastic job with this blend, dude. And the presentation is just <clears throat> when you look at the picture of the cigar. Which, by the way, looked pretty good on that blue background uh, that I took the picture. I should yeah. probably do more of that. It looks really cool. Um, but it's got that little pigtail cap, that really, really wide band 
on the cigar with the shaggy foot. It's a beautiful presentation, uh, and to me, worth every penny. I, w- I if you see these, you gotta you gotta buy at least some. I understand it's expensive to buy a box, but um, I'm saying this is box worthy. Yeah, go go buy three, and you can get a t- uh, you know a raffle ticket to the to the big smoke. It, it, you know, and the Stogie geeks and all of us are going to really appreciate this cigar because. Um, if you're a Stoey geek, you're probably like Will and myself. We're all about flavor, and this cigar delivers in that flavor department. Yeah, and um, it's pretty unique to find a cigar like you know with that nice presentation, that price point that I can really, you know, put our brand behind and put my recommendation behind, um, and have it not be like a Davidoff, which would probably be even more expensive in this format, right? But uh, this is one that you have to try. You have to try this one. Totally agree. I, I really like that cigar. Back to you, Will. Just a comment. I've actually uh, kind of um, popped my cherry, so to speak, and I've, I've lit my first Indian motorcycle cigar. I've just finally got some of these. And Which um, did you light up, Will? The natural. In the Toro? Yep. I find I that the, the natural and the Toro is smoking even better than when I first got them. I still prefer the Robusto, and I'm not sure I sent you a Robusto in the natural. You did, and I, and I, and I purposely lit this one up to kind yep. of – uh, go, but I wanted to light one up, and it's really good. So did I send you a, a natural Robusto? Yes. Okay, good. I got the natural Robusto. I tell you what, and the, the Toro's given the Robusto a run for its money right now. Very good. I'm telling it's you, it's very, like, it's a very similar, enjoyable smoking experience. It's just a longer smoking experience. Yep. They're pretty strong cigars, too. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they are. This has got a little more... Uh, it's got you some know, kick I, to it. Yeah, it definitely does. I um I actually lit up uh, an Opus X Robusto from the tin because you were telling your story about Opus X and uh, yep. I tell you yep. what this cigar is awesome. It's got a lot of sweetness to it and it's it doesn't have that much age on it. Probably about a year maybe and uh, it's it's fantastic. Is it is it my turn or your turn now, Will? It's uh, your turn. I think it's my turn. It's your turn. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I talked about a box pressing and existing cigar. So I smoked the Aging Room bin number one in the uh, D major, which is a box pressed, uh, the box press version of the Aging Room bin number one line. I didn't know they made Uh, that in a box press. They just came out with it. Mm. Yep. Interesting. Yep. So and it's nice. It comes in a, it comes in a coffin package so i mean you get these in a coffin and um it's it's not an inexpensive cigar it's it is a cigar that goes for about 15 dollars, right but it's not much more the aging room bin number one line isn't is a more premium line they are using the uh the tobaccos from like uh going back 16 years actually now 17 years ago um and you know it's there's really really some good tobacco in this cigar um and Really, I liked I liked what this cigar did in in the box press. There's a nice vanilla note you get along the way. Some good natural tobacco flavors. Um, there's um, there's some sweetness in, in the first two thirds. It becomes a little more earthy in the last third, but not it doesn't lose flavor by any means. Um, I thought the box pressing did a really good job um, in terms of the box press. Um, I kind of felt that um, you know. Some you know we talked about how box pressing we we've talked about it a lot how it can change the cigar this one this one it will change it I like the draw in this cigar I like a little more openness on my draw with a box press um, as opposed to a tight box press which which I I just don't like but I like a little more tightness on a Pareo um, it's it's a box worthy cigar um, you know if you want to get something a little more premium I, the bin number one is one of my favorite lines released by Aging Room and I think the box press just does a nice job and um, it's, you know, like I said, I would smoke it, compare it with uh, the Parejo. Um, but, you know, it's hard to say if this is the bell of the ball because I do like some of the Parejos in that line as well. So they also make a Lancero in this blend. Yeah, someone in the chat, Punch in the chat, said you got one in a Lancero. I haven't smoked that one yet. I haven't smoked the Lancero yet, um, but it's that's the D minor. They came out, so they did the D major and the D minor this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I had smoked the, uh, the B minor, which was the... Which was the Toro size um, last year, and I really liked it. Um, I smoked a cigar from La Flor Dominicana that I really liked a lot. 
Actually, I spoke two that I really liked a lot. One, I wrote up a review for the show. I'll talk about both. Um, but this one was greatly anticipated by myself. Well, one, because it came from La Flor Dominicana, who had, I, I like their cigars. And the packaging uh, and the look of the cigar really appealed to me. This is the Lenox. Oh, you, I want to hear about this. Have you smoked this yet, Will? I have. I smoked it, but I smoked the pre-release of it. Did you smoke it at the show? Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people said they smoked the cigar at the show, and they were kind of like, eh. I, they were almost like holding back their opinion, didn't have favorable things to say because they smoked it at the show. I wasn't unfavorable on it. I did, I'll let you talk about it. I had a – this cigar surprised me, though. When now, I did. This wrapper is really dark. Yeah. It's a Brazilian wrapper. Mm-hmm. And um, – I think that the environment that uh, was IPCPR this year in terms of weather wasn't really conducive to smoking this cigar. And uh, I think you said, did you, you sent this one to me. Well, I sent it to you courtesy of uh, our friend John Carney. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I let it rest for a little while in the humidor, and I smoked it the other day. And I tell you what, this cigar is off the charts good. It is I, it's a, amazing. You, you, LFD, you think like really strong cigars typically. I mean, this is a solid medium bodied cigar with a ton of flavor. That's it had like those dark fruit notes and like earth and uh, all of those components. It was just so good. It was really, really good smoke. Um, it, it, one of the best newer offerings from LFD that I've smoked in some time, to be honest with you. Um, I thought that they did some fantastic things with the Brazilian wrapper on this one, Will. I would totally smoke more of these. Uh, and I rated this box worthy. This one really impressed me. And, I, I, you know, I've got limited space in my humidor, and I, I, I would not be disappointed in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, and I smoked this in the Toro. Again, this is a Brazilian wrapper with a San Andreas binder. And uh, Dominican uh, filler, including uh, uh, Pelo de Oro. Uh, again, they list the strength as medium, dude, and they're spot on. Barry from the Cigar Authority, uh, who I got that information from, rated the cigar in 96. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't blame him. I, I think he's 96? Yeah, that's 96. a high rating. And I, I, I think it's very well deserved. Wow. Um, and again, when I talk to people that smoked this at the show, they're kind of like, and I talk to people that smoked it afterwards when it had a little time to, to rest and be properly humidified and they're all very high on this cigar so if you see this coming to the retailers grab some for sure i think that uh, our audience is going to be really high in this cigar medium bl- body tons of flavor so the funny story about and first of all i think you're spot on in terms of i didn't review it but i guess i smoked it mm-hmm. so I, I have a Todd on my end who's my local tobacconist, Todd Johnson at Union Cigar. He was at the show and he said, he goes, Will, I had this little floor cigar, kicked my ass, knocked me down. It was like the strongest cigar I had. It was called Lenox. I said, I said, I heard that's not a strong cigar. No, it's He's, not. No, no. He goes, it's strong. So I went when I went and smoked it, I'm like, Todd, this is not a strong cigar. Like, what are you talking? He can't, he, he basically can't handle, a, you know, He's more of a milder guy. I mean, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. But um, so that's when you look at that dark wrapper, you're you're expecting a bold in your face. That is not what this cigar delivers. Um, no. And at even all. The, the name and the packaging when you when you look at the band, you know, it's got the uh, black and blue colors on it with that half moon. You you kind of think like this is going to be like an ass kicker of cigar. It comes from LFD. It's not, man. It is a total medium bodied cigar, through and through. Oh, oh, that's that was exactly my my take of it. Um, so I, I would I would definitely assess it. It's a medium, and you know they've been going for you know over the past couple of years. They're they're starting to move into that medium range. You know they came out yeah. with the 1994, and and now this one. Oh, so I, and I'm telling you. The 1994 that came in the jar, I, I mean, I have to go back and smoke that one. I really wasn't high on that cigar, to be honest with you. I wasn't either. But I have to say, um, uh, they gave me uh, that in the Robusto size. So this doesn't come in the, uh, you know, the, um, not the jar, but the, uh, that's it's, a, that's it's a right different back rapper, there man. in the Beerstein. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the, the one that doesn't come in the Beerstein. 
Apparently, that's a slightly different blend. Different, right? Yeah, it's a different. It's, a, it's more of a Maduro they're using on that. So the nine, 1994 from the Florida Dominican and the Robusto size, dude, that cigar's off the charts as well. And that's a solid medium. That cigar's no, they, all about flavor, dude. I mean, these are two releases from the floor that I am behind 100%, and I can't wait to buy more of them and smoke more of them. Yeah, I think, the, you know, and I was glad they brought back the, um, and we're going to smoke it on the show next week when I'm up there. Uh, I have some of the co- um, the Coronados. Which I always like those Coronados. So John, oh, I haven't said, smoked the new Coronado yet. I, it's well, it's the same blend, probably different vintage. It's back. I'm bringing that up for us. I have that. Oh, good. So we'll, uh, John is going to be one of our guests next week. So oh, good. We'll smoke it during his segment. Is John, but yeah, I, is John coming in? He's coming in the studio. I got to double check that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll because he's check. he's local. He's New England. Yeah, he's, he's New, New England because he likes all my Patriots posts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a big. He, he can come on the show any time because he's a Patriots fan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, football season's not going well this year. <laughs> hey, it's going great for us, man. Five and zero, so you know. Yeah, we we yeah. were in first uh, three and three here. Fucking <laughs> 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 longer. Uh, Back to you, Will. Um. I smoked a cigar. This one was released last year. I think it really flew under the radar um, for this company. The Rocky Patel Decade Cameroon. Um, so what they did is they took Rocky Patel's Decade blend and they, they put a Cameroon wrapper on it. Um, the story with the cigar is apparently they were doing – they got some Cameroon wrapper and Rocky's worked with it with his vintage 2003. But I guess they, would, they wanted to test the wrapper out so they put it on the Decade blend – they were so happy with it, they decided to release it. Um, so I smoked the 5 by 50 Robusto. Um, this is a great cigar. Um, you know, the Decade's one of Rocky's iconic lines. Mm. I think with this with this Cameron wrapper, fantastic's the word. It's got it's got that Rocky Patel caramely note that he talks about. So you're definitely gonna get that. You get a little bit of a mixed fruit note um, in there. You get um a nice amount of pepper, but it's not overpowering. But you're going to get that Cameroon sweetness off this cigar, which I was real, real impressed with this cigar. Um, not a not a budget breaker either. Nine seventy five, so you know a little higher, but you know box worthy cigar. Um, I'll say this: this is a full bodied cigar. It's going to have a lot of weight on your palate, but it's not going to overpower you with nicotine. Interesting. Um, but yeah, and I'll tell you what, I smoked a few of these, um, and I was real, real, like I said, this is just a cigar that really flew under the radar for Rocky. Yeah, um, I, I, really, of- I really think that a lot of the Stogie Geeks um, kind of uh, dismiss some of the Rocky Patel cigars um, for whatever reason, you know. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of his cigars are available on the internet, and, you know, they say all these things about Rocky. I tell you what, dude, I the Super Lajero... I freaking love that cigar. I smoked one the other night when we were when we were talking. Will, I love that cigar. That's a fantastic cigar. And and I'll say this, you know, he uh, he's really. I mean, I went and saw his operation, and there's a real commitment to quality there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I got some more videos from Honduras. I got to put up, but you know, I saw this even in the detail of the packaging when they're packaging up the Gary Sheffield cigar, which has like three bands on it. How they would just attention, make sure every one of those bands just were on there perfect. Um, and by the way, if you guys watched the baseball playoffs last night, Gary Sheffield gives out is uh, like he gives out a game cigar, so to speak, to a player. And during the playoffs, he's had the Gary Sheffield cigars um, out. I thought it was great for the industry to see that. Yeah. Um, and I'm a Gary I saw, your, I saw your picture on that. That was cool. I, I had a chance to interview Gary uh, once, and he could not have been nicer. And he's a cigar guy. He loves cigars. And it was great to see. I'm not, I want to get him back on. I want to get him on the show, actually. Yeah, that'd be great. Again. He's a really super guy. So, And he does a lot of events, too. Nice. Um, I smoked the Tatuaje, the Jackal. And Jekyll. this is uh, oh Jackal or the Jekyll the Jackal Jackal the black okay the one the, the Tor- one okay the torpedo, the torpedo. Yeah. yeah this is from uh, Casa de Monte Cristo yep uh, is that the one I sent you no oh, okay I got this Did from I my friend Steve 
Okay. He, he they could, sent us some. Did they sent us some too. So my friend Steve lives near Casa de Monte Cristo, uh, in you know, outside of Chicago. And uh he, he gifted me one of these uh in the summer. I he said it needed time, so I let it rest for a couple of months and I smoked it. And the first third of the cigar was really good. I thought it had those nice, like, woody notes with a little bit of spice, that typical, like, tatawahe kind of, like, twang to it, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and did a great job presenting flavors and, you know, coating your palate. It was interesting um, because it has that – it's not a shaggy foot, but it's an un, kind of a unwrapped uh, foot. Yeah, a rough cut. Uh, yeah. yeah, so they don't put the wrapper on the first, you know, half right. an inch or so. And when you smoke that first half or half inch or so, it's a very thin smoke, and it doesn't really coat your palate. It's it's very thin. You know what I mean? Again, it's like the difference between drinking water and, and drinking a heavy scotch, right? Or a really thick beer. Once the wrapper kicks in, it gives a little bit of that smooth creaminess kind of component and coat your palate a lot better. Um, and it did really well in in the first third uh, and even into the second third. But like the second half of the cigar just didn't do it for me. Um, I don't know if it kind of lost steam or could use a little more age. Um, but uh, for that case, I rated it a fiver. So not, again, not a bad cigar. It's just that, like the the first half was outstanding and the second half was a little less than outstanding. So I rated it a fiver. That's good. It's still a good rating. Yeah, still a good rating. Still a good cigar. I enjoyed it. Um, I think that age will definitely help the the final third of that cigar. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was impressed with that blend. Um, it's different. You know, it's not like it seemed like they, they went and did something very. It's different than a lot of these other uh, shop store exclusives, which I find sometimes they just kind of tweaks of something else. But this yeah. one seemed a little different. And they're using that Sancti Spiritus wrapper on that, which Tatawai is only used on the Jekyll. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, so it's mostly a Latelier wrapper, but. Pete used it on last year's Monster, but they got it for theirs and um, uh, for the Jackal. And I, and we heard in the chat room last week that apparently that I think some of these have shown up at a few other retailers in the Midwest. So I want to say I know we heard that Jungle Gyms uh, in Ohio I think has some of them. So they may be having some dis- they may be distributing them to some other shops, but it's Casa de Monte Cristo that has them and you can get them online. Um, we both smoked a hide, but we're not ready to review it yet. We're not ready to review. I it. want to make I sure just... that we mention it that we both smoked it, and we're kind of holding back our rating yet. Uh, rating yeah, so I, far. Again, I smoked it and on a car ride, um, which is not. It was more to kind of get a feel for it. They landed so in think... my shop like yesterday or the day before, maybe, where I bought them, and I I just bought a couple. I'm probably going to buy more. Um. To smoke and review, um, but yeah, we're not we're not ready to review that cigar yet. No, I'm I'm having Paul. I'm, it's getting harder and harder for me to kind of a, a cigar shows up and then review it lately. I'm just yeah. finding I need to go through, just do the cigar justice. Um, so it's more gotta, and more. I, I'm feeling like you need to let them rest, and you need to smoke more than one. You, 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 yeah, I'm, everything on Coop, unless I just unless in isolated cases, because it's a more detailed review I'm going to do on there. They're going to go through multiple smokes, so right. But but yeah, so that even, does delay. I mean, it delays the process. I mean, if you got to let it age and you got to smoke more than one, that's inevitably going to delay the process. I'm yeah. also finding that how you store the cigar makes a difference. I think the flavors are definitely different depending on how you store the cigar. I'm finding that if it's in too high of a humidity environment, even if it's 70, temperature plays a, a role in that too. Um, I'm finding I like to store them a little cooler and a little drier for a little while before I smoke them to review to really get that flavor. And, and, and Phil Zanke from Debonair, he's a huge proponent of this uh, and letting your cigar kind of dry box before you smoke it. Um, so that also adds some time to the review cycle. You got to play your cards right. Yeah. Uh, make sure they're properly humidified and even, like I said, a little cooler and a little drier um, for a couple of days before you smoke them. Yeah, like you know, this Indian motorcycle cigar. This just came. I mean, I just got home. I, I and I said I'm gonna light one up. 
this is I'm not reviewing it, but I'm getting an impression of this. It gives me an imp- I can still get an impression of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I've sometimes gotten an impression and it's been totally different when I've sat down and reviewed it. Right. This is very good, though. I mean, this, this is very positive. Um, and, I, and I just like I said, I think there's something to just kind of especially if it's newer release stuff too. you. You just don't want to. You know, you don't want to say it's the greatest thing since sliced bread right away. Yeah. At the same time, you don't want to kill it. So you do need to give give it a little more time with that, I think. Yeah. Uh, and you're smoking the natural, Will? I'm smoking the natural. Yeah. Really good cigar. The natural it's is good. a stronger... Uh, strong. I, I like the way the natural coats your palate. Like, I think it gives a very smooth, creamy smoke that kind of coats, um, you know, kind of like from left to right. Like, it, it doesn't just hit the center or, or the sides. I think it coats pretty evenly your palate. Um, and I think that gives you a really rich flavor experience uh, when it does that. Very for a natural, it's very rich. It surprised me the way the natural coated your palate and the strength of the natural being that natural wrapper, um, the way that it did that. Very different yeah. from the from the Maduro, and the Maduro is very good as well. But it's it's not as strong, which is which is usually yeah. which yeah. is weird, you know, perception that we have as of, of cigars that darker wrapper is means stronger. That's you know, obviously not always the case, but um, very good cigar. The Taurus is smoking really good right now too. Yep. Cool. What else we got, Will? Uh, I got one. Go ahead. You got one more. I got one more. Um, I smoked Avo Classic Covers Volume Two. Um, That's the one I reviewed last week. Yep, I went through I went through them over the weekend, um, and I had actually smoked this. I know I kind of gave an impression of it. I didn't give a Stogie Geeks rating on it per se. Yeah. Um, basically, my impression was pretty much what I thought. This is a bolder, richer, and it's got a lot of richness. This cigar, um, especially when you get into the second third of this, you get some of those coffee notes. You get that dark chocolate component. It's very unavo like. It's, you're not going to get that grassy herbal component to this thing. Um, it's fuller. It's definitely a stronger avo. I mean, this thing, by the end of this cigar, it's full strength and full body. I mean, so there's there's some kick to this cigar. The only negative I have on this cigar, and I've smoked now through a few of these, I felt that this cigar had a little looser draw than I prefer. And I had this problem with the LE10 a little, too. It was a looser draw, and I had a really controlled. I had to work to control the draw to prevent the cigar from overheating. Yep. So that can happen. I didn't find that with this cigar, will, but I found that with other cigars. Uh, the the Abo Le Ten, which was a cigar of the year in my book, um, was notorious for that. But it, I felt this cigar was still good enough where it was worth the extra effort because I I was enjoying this cigar so much. But when I lit one of these up. The first time, I, it burned hot, right? And I had to put it out, right? I lit a second one up, right? And it was I could see it was starting to do the same thing. So I kind of just eased up on the drawer a bit, and it, and it smoked great after that. Um, it's a, I kind of agree with your assessment. It's a box-worthy cigar that could go higher. Mm-hmm. Um, I, do, I do like Classic Covers Volume 1 a lot. And I would say, you know, smoke that one, too, because that's more classic album. But this is a nice complimentary offering. Excellent. Do we have some? Uh, we have a prize pack to give away. Prize pack one sixty one. Right. I don't know what that is. What would you like the question to be, Will? Well, we could do something. How hard do you want the? Qu- you want a hard question or an easy question? Um, you pick. Let's do an easy question. Okay. Ah, okay, that was that. Okay, well, 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 we'll do it. Jose Blanco says one thing could ruin a cigar experience. What is it? Yes, it was also number five on my list of yeah uh, components to have in yeah yeah. <laughs> What's the kind of person you don't want to smoke a cigar with? Yeah, according to Jose Blanco. Yeah, and you can you could uh, you could be candid. <laughs> yes. I'll just, yeah. We can Absolutely. be candid. Yeah. Um, Send that answer to the show at stogiegeeks.com, and you will win a fabulous prize pack, of which I don't know what it is. <laughs> Did you forget to put the prize pack out again? <laughs> uh, it's in the, the – the, well, it's in the new humidor for all the prize packs, um, which I bought an igloo cooler 
on Amazon for like forty-seven dollars free shipping, and um, we use Bovita packs with Ziploc bags for this particular humidor. And from your experiences, Will, it's going to go awesome. These, let me tell you, and we're not the only ones who do this. I know Seth does it from Seth's humidor. The Bovitas work really good like this. Um, and we haven't heard anyone complain about the quality of, you know, we ship all our stuff with Bovita. And so, so no one's complaining of quality. If there's ever a problem, you can always let us know. But, um, yeah, so we're very confident um, with this as well. Um, we should mention there's no show next Thursday. There is not. We are not because having Because we're recording on Friday. We're recording our marathon all day show in honor of the four year anniversary of Stogie Geeks. Awesome. I can't so, wait. That's 10 a.m. Big, big, yeah, yeah, 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. I get in next. I will be in Rhode Island for that show, and I'm really looking forward. I've not seen the studio yet, so I'm really looking forward to it. The new studio, I should say. Yeah, we may. Um, because all of the Stoey Geeks viewers love the uh, natural wood background, we may we may do that if it's ready. Yeah. If it's if ready. it's ready, if we it's have ready. to rebuild. We have to rebuild it because well, the funny part is to get a little behind the scenes look. That wall that was behind us is actually like a fake wall. It's actually built on a frame that's on wheels that you can move around. It's like totally like a TV set, right? Like it's a total fake wall. It's not a real wall. Um, it's just a partition. Um, but it was so gigantic that there was no way to move it into the new studio. Um, so we have to take it all apart and then put it back together in the studio and it's so big that we have to like cut it up and, 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 and make it you know fit in here in the studio. So we're working on doing that. I, I make no promises. Well, that's going to be done before next Friday. Well, but yeah, we're, no, we're no, working I, on getting the, the the wood wall back because yeah, everyone liked that. And, and Paul, you and Nick have just done an incredible job with the studio move. It's been seamless. We've the show has gone on. Um, the sets look great. You know, we have multiple sets now. Uh, so it's a great job. I can't wait to kind of actually experience these new sets next week. So I'm, yeah. I'm really... uh, So hopefully, I mean, if all goes well, we'll have that set. If not, um, you know, we it's... get a pretty big set that we've already set up. And, and one part of the set actually has uh, some cigar boxes uh, on display, kind of paying homage to, to Will's cigar box wall that was behind him uh, as well. So, By the way, if, um, if you're in Rhode Island... Drop by the studio. You'll got plenty to smoke. Friday, um, October thirtieth. I just I don't know what I'm gonna use uh, for my costume because it's Halloween day for oh, Halloween. Oh shoot! I forgot about that. Got to be I'm in glad costume you remind, of some I'm gonna kind. have to get something. Yeah, I'll have to get to work on something. That's right. Yep. Cool. Um. So I don't know what prize pack one sixty one is, but we're gonna send you something fabulous. From you get the T-shirt. You'll get our T-shirt as well. You'll get our T-shirt as well. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you next Friday for our 4 year anniversary show. So we'll see everyone next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>